So my in uh, my previous discussions, I just uh, discussed about different mode of operations of different uh, switching converters. Okay, so different topologies are there. Okay, different uh, mode means is it continuous mode or discontinuous mode? Okay, so that portion I have uh, discussed with different control structure, different controllers were, was there. Okay. So, <clears throat> to, uh, some uh, portion is there, okay, some portion I have not uh, till, uh, discussed, that is uh, current mode control, okay. So, in previous all such discussions, if you see my previous slides, okay, so all the previous slides, if you uh, will to see that you can, uh, you can understand that, uh, that the controller, okay, so that the controller is, uh, is situated, okay. So um, uh, after the differentiations in between, after the difference between the reference voltage and output voltage, reference voltage and output voltage, you will get the error. Okay, so uh, the error is input of the controllers, and after that controller will get the output and that put in the driver side. Okay, so that is an observed over there. Okay, so this is basically voltage mode control. Okay. So, in current mode control, you can see over here, okay, so the, in previous cases, you are not sensing any voltage, okay, sorry, you are not sensing any current, okay, so in that control strategy, there is no current, uh, in the control strategy, there is no such any current, uh, current loop, direct current loop is not there, okay, so basically, the, so what is the basic motivation for current program control or current mode control? The motivation is that system response will be very fast. Okay. In voltage mode control, what is the problem? The <coughs> system response is slow. <coughs> Means the converter dynamics, if you see the converter dynamics, okay, that response is quite slow in uh, voltage mode control. But in case of current mode control, you can observe that system performance is much better. Okay, basically the fastness of the system. Okay, so from the structure you can see it's a buck converter, okay. So, current mode control, you know the basic structure of buck converter. Uh, <coughs> if my slide is changing, hello, current program control that slide is okay. okay. So, current program control is the heading. Uh, is my slide is changing, okay. So, or it is only fixed for one slide, changing, okay. changing, sir. Changing, na? okay. If, if it is not changing, please let me know. Okay. So um, here you can see, but uh, basic structure of the buck converter. Okay. Initially, what happened? We are just sensing the output voltage over here. Okay. So your output voltage is coming here. That is your VT. Then you are comparing with your reference voltage. That is your V reference. Okay. Then error will be there. Then compensator will be there. Direct the compensator. Uh, after the compensator, will get the control output. Okay. Control signal or control input, you can say in single term. Then one controller is there. You can see that block one. Okay, so that block is called uh, that block is called current uh, program controller. Okay, so you can see that block. Okay, so that is called that current program controller. Okay, so that block is named as current program controller. Okay, here you can see one rectangular block is there. So that block. What is the functions of this block? So here you can see one comparator is there, okay, that is called, it may be analog controller, okay. So, controller is there, so your controller, uh, a comparator is there, the input of the con uh, comparator is, your one is your control input, another one is your current input, okay. So, measure switching current, okay, so measure switching current is there, okay, so that current is coming from here, then it is RF, okay. So, uh, current gain is there, okay, then if you can compare that value and finally you will get that uh, uh, analog comparator, okay. From the output of the analog comparator, what will be the output, you will get some PWM time, means it is a, what is the nature of the current signal, the response, it look like a, a triangular, okay, so it look like a triangular, okay, so from the next response and you are comparing it's a DC value. Okay, more or less very small variations, okay, very slow variations are there, but you can say like that it is a DC value, okay, if you compare both of them, so we will get some PWM value, okay, 
the PWM there, so that PWM is come to the uh, reset of the latch. Okay, so reset of the latch and your set terminal. Okay, set terminal means when the latch will be turned on. If the clock will be there, okay, so if the clock pulse will be there, okay, by giving the clock pulse to the set terminal of the latch, okay, that compactor, that means that RS flip flop will be working. Okay, so if the clock pulse is there, it, again it will be off, on. When it will be off, means when the reset pulse, okay, so you are giving the PWM, no? so when the PWM high terminal is there and the clock pulse is there. Both of the high is there, so it will be what? Okay, when suddenly that low pulse is there, means in PWM some portion is high, then after some duration, after DTS, it will be low, then automatically it will be off. That RS slash, it will be off. So you will get some value over here, okay? So why it is called current program? Basically, that PWM width, okay, basically the PWM width is coming here, that totally decided on your current nature, pattern of the current. The current pattern of your converter. Okay, so that's why the PWM is developed. The width of the PWM also decided by the pattern of the means uh, on time of the current signal. Okay, then what happened? Then uh, uh, on means both of the on clock is on. Okay, the rest the time period of the clock you can see over there it is started from zero. Then PS PS means switching time. Okay, that's clock frequency. Okay, the clock frequency and the Switching frequency of that MOSFET or that switch or the transistor, okay, that Q1. Both of the frequencies should be synchronized, means both of the frequencies should be same, okay. If both are different, then it will not work properly, okay. So that sequence will be different, okay. But how it will be maintained? Basically, if you can get from directly the current signal you are reaching from here, okay. After getting the current signal, automatically it will synchronize okay if the clock frequency if you if you uh, design your system for the 50 kilohertz okay if you try to design your system for 50 kilohertz so definitely the uh, clock frequency that is externally provided to the rs latch okay rs latch so it should be the 50 kilohertz okay so <clears throat> then what happens when that the latch is on you can see over here it is your control signal uh, sorry, it is your control signal, uh, it's a control signal, okay, ICT, and here you can see that uh, <coughs> PWM, uh, that PWM is there, okay, so up to DTS it will be there, okay, so on duration means what, it is your on duration, so clock is turned on, so clock is turned on, and PWM on is also be there, okay, so then your system means your converter will be turned on, means high pass will be there. Okay, the Q will be high. Okay, the Q pulse will be high. Okay, the Q pulse will be high. Okay, that pulse will be high. Okay, so up to which time it will be on? So definitely the comparator turns, uh, comparator turns transistor off. Means when that PWM, that PWM is there, so lower pulse is there, means high to low. Okay, that PWM is high to low. So when it will be coming high to low, then automatically reset pulse will be nil, okay, it will be zero. So suddenly your switch will be, your output will be off. Okay, that's why you will not get any output from your Q terminal. Okay, when it will be again start, it will be start the next block pulse. Okay, when next block instant will be there, means next block pulse will be there. Okay, so at your switching period, so again it will be on. So that is called TS, that's why it is called TS. So on period, then off period. Then it will be again turned on and TS. So if you see the inductor current pattern, so it's your steady state pattern. So current will be starting from here and gradually increasing. Okay, so current is starting from here and gradually increasing up to which portion up to your control signal. Okay, so which type of control it is? It is called peak current mode control. Okay, so your reference current. So you can say like that control input is your reference input. Okay, so how much it can be increased? Maximum control up to control input. Okay, so beyond that all, it will be turned down. So when it will be touch, when your inductor current, when your inductor current, that current is touching with your control in the control signal, okay, means ICT, so automatically it will be turned down. Okay.
that's why it is called basically that reset pulse will be in that case reset pulse will be enable then automatically turn off that's why it is called current program control basically the converter basically the switch of the converter is controlled by the controlling pulse of the control by the current okay the reference current is coming from the uh, comparator okay it will be control the operation basic oper uh, control the basic uh, on time of your switch of your <coughs> of your switching converter that's why it is called that current program control so it is written that the peak transistor current replace the duty cycle as the converter control input okay so i think all of you will to understand so what is the uh, comparison between the current program control with the duty cycle control duty cycle control means you are only giving the you can say like the directly voltage okay you can say like the current program control versus voltage 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 mode control or you can say like the current mode control versus the voltage mode control means only duty cycle oriented control so definitely basic benefit is that in current program control it is very fast okay the response of the converter dynamics is very fast so what are the advantages the advantages of the current program control okay first on the simpler dynamics the inductor pole is moved to high frequency okay so you know that basically the presence of the inductor okay so the non minimum phase problem is of that okay if it is goes to the high frequency means you can say like that if it tends to the infinite so the effect of that pole to the converter dynamics why goes to be reduced okay so that's why you can uh, that's why we are normally using the current mode control for the control of the the uh, boost converter back boost converter I means those converter having non minimum phase problem that's the basic motivation for using the current mode control basically the rhp zero that will be shifted to the high frequency okay so if it will be shifted to the high frequency then the effect of that rhp zero to the converter dynamics will be reduced okay that's the basic benefit okay so next point is the simple robust output voltage converter okay with a large phase matching can we obtain without use of the compensator lead network okay so you know that previous discussions that we are using the lead network for what we are normally using the lead network for boosting up that voltage value sorry the boosting of the phase okay so automatically current mode control by its inherent property it is boosting up the phase of the system okay so that is another benefit of the current program control it is always necessary to sense the transistor current okay to protect against the over current failure okay that's why we are using that current mode control with means maximum current so if you limiting the maximum current how much maximum current can be flow through the transistor okay so in current program control you can define the external okay so beyond that range the current will not go okay so your switch will be protected from the over current uh, problem okay so we may uh, we may as well use the information during the normal operation to obtain the better control okay transistor failure due to excessive current can be prevented simply uh, by limiting ic means controlling signal current okay ic means control response time okay the transformer saturation problem in the bridge of the push pull converter can be mitigated okay this is only that if you make the current limit okay by your um, system so definitely that the problem will be solved means what type of problem means saturation problem so how that amount of current will not be flow will not be flown to the circuit so the saturation problem will be reduced okay so basic disadvantage basically the disadvantage is the stability region the stability region in current mode control is less okay another one is the noise okay susceptibility of the noise so noise is the another reason okay there are different different cause also be there in current mode control normally we can see or we can study the converter dynamics okay means it is uh, it is single and it is period one operation so it will be video to means video doubling operations means after uh, you can see that uh, i think you know about the phase portrait okay na so phase portraits are there so state variable if you are going to plot the phase variable, uh, 
plot the state variables okay in xy plot so inductor current and capacitor voltage okay so due to the changing of the reference current means ic that you are changing the ic value ic value is changing so you can see that periodicity of the limit cycle in steady state condition in steady state condition if you are going to plot that your state variable okay if you are going to plot your state variable in steady state state variable curve in the xy domain okay or in, in xy plotter and you can see that there will be a side close path which look like a limit cycle okay it's not look like a limit cycle it's a limit cycle it's a stable limit cycle okay if you change that reference current means icp okay means control current range so you can observe that sometimes with the variation of the current range the limit cycle periodicity is also been changed okay so that you can observe okay the changing of the periodicity okay that's why it is written like the susceptibility to the noise okay so due to that periodicity changing means sometimes it may cause for unwanted noise some unwanted it is called in single word sub harmonic oscillations okay sometimes you can see some sub harmonic oscillations that may create some problem with this system okay so it having some disadvantage but if you see the advantage is a more uh, more powerful than the disadvantage okay that's why more uh, most of the times okay basically we are considering current program control for the first converter dynamics okay when i am telling about your the instability na then some uh, instability is observed that oscillations of the duty cycle is more than 0.5 then you can observe that current program controller inherently unstable for more than duty cycle is more than 0.5 okay regardless of the converter topology you whatever will be the converter topology is there but if you duty is more than 0.5 so it may cause for unstability so controller can be stabilized by additional uh, by addition of artificial ram okay that's why you can add some of the ram signal for making it stable means ram means what normally dc is purely wave or constant okay so all the time it try to reach that constant value so if you reduce that value uh, if you uh, replace that steady state dc control signal with the ram signal then what happen then automatically it will reach that current will be reach up to that ram level then again come down again come up again come down climb up and climb down climb up and climb down like that so ram signal it is artificial ram you can super input into such okay into control signal that may increase the stability boundary okay that may increase your stability boundary of the converter <coughs> okay so objective of the uh, of this section is the stability analysis describe the artificial ram scheme so okay so here you can see normal inductor current wave from in ccl okay it is your control signal ic is your control signal <coughs> current okay so it is dc means it is dotted line and fixed line okay you can see it is your inductor current il expression and il zero is your uh, for zero instant it, it is your uh, you can say the initial value it is a steady state response okay it's not the transient response all all of you should be given by okay it's a steady state response okay so il is zero okay here you can see that ic is there i see the control signal okay il is zero il zero means your initial value then it will be ramp up with the slope of m1 okay climb up with the slope of m1 and reach up to control current okay reference current ic okay so then you can observe okay if it is reach that ic up to dts and up to on time interval okay then what happen it will be climb down with the slope of minus m and up to ts means up to switching time period it will be maintained okay then again climb up again climb up the inductor current slope m1 is there and minus m Okay, the current slope M1 is there and M2. So back converter. So here you can see that M1 means you can see that y equal to mx plus c. That 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 uh, mx means your slope. Okay, so it will be there directly. You can calculate that one. So DIL dt. Okay, you can see like that. M1 means DIL dt. 
मॉडल इन क्लासेस ओके सो यू नो दैट इनिशियल वैल्यू प्लस दैट वन ओके सो स्मॉल वेरिएशन सो डायरेक्टली आई हैव रिटन दैट एक्सप्रेशन सो सो आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू कैन रिकनेक्ट दैट मिसिंग लिंक ओके सो दैट क्वेश्चन आई हैव नॉट डिस्कस हियर बट इनिशियली आई हैव डिस्कस इफ यू रिविजिट माय प्रीवियस स्लाइड्स ओके सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड अगेन दैट वाज थॉरली डिस्कस ओके दैट क्वेश्चन वाज थॉरली डिस्कस फ्रॉम वेयर आई एम गेटिंग दिस एक्सप्रेशन ओके So it's simple, okay. So I L D T S means that portion. I L D T S equal to okay. So it will be Y equal to X plus C form, okay. Equal to I C means it is your I C means control circuit current, okay. So control signal current X max, okay. Equal to what initially M X plus C max C equal to I L zero plus M one into D T S simple form. Now we can solve from this expression the B value. So the B value is coming I C minus I zero then we will get it by M one. Simple thing. But the second interval means you now we have to find out I L T S. Okay, I L T S means again Y equal to minus M X plus C. Okay, so C equal to what? C equal to that value I L D T S. Okay, I L D T S minus M D S T S. Okay, again I L uh, I L D T S uh, equals to you know that I L zero plus M one D S. You can replace that value in steady state value. What happened in steady state? That only you will get. There will be uh, no that both in steady state I L T S and I L zero. In steady state I L T S that value and this value both will be same. So you can cut each other. You can cut both sides. Means left hand side, right hand side. I L T T S equal. So you can cancel each other. So finally, and you can make it capital in steady state will be this value. So it will be capital M one. Capital D T S minus M two D dash T S. So what is D dash? One minus two. Okay. So M one by M two means slope one by slope two in steady state. It will be there D by capital D by D dash. Okay. Means D by one minus D. Okay. I think uh, uh, till now all of you are able to understand. Okay. So if you have any confusion, you can ask. Okay. So I can again re-discuss that point. So now I am checking that perturbations of in that current. Okay, perturbations means it is your steady state value, na I L zero. Okay, it is your I L zero, and here you are getting that value, so I L T S. Okay, capital I L T S, that value. Okay, so now perturbation means you are giving small disturbance. Okay, so that may cause for shifting. Okay, perturbation means what? Na you are giving the very small disturbance, and that may cause for the Partial or that may cause for simple shifting of the responses. Okay, so you are giving the positive perturbations means positive disturbance you are giving. So that's why your inductor current. Okay, your it is resistance value as I capital I is suffix change zero. Okay, now it is changing to the capital I I L zero plus I cap L zero. Okay, small variation is there. Okay, and uh, then it will be climb up over there and reach to the Uh, that's to the IC value, 
and then it will be climb down gradually then if it is increasing upper side due to giving the perturbation so definitely that portion will be come to the next side means uh, lesser side so it is your steady state of the first one is your steady state of the okay so it is your steady state of the okay it is your steady state of the means first one that one okay now it is uh, next one is your perturbation okay that is your perturbation okay the next one so giving some of the disturbance okay so i think all of you will to understand so now you can say like that previously that point was dts now due to perturbation it is uh, coming to that point so dt is changed okay is changed to d cap ts okay that is coming from now okay directly is equal to capital d plus d cap it is that is ts okay it is coming so it is minus a whatever it is minus it's ts is there okay So, perturbation inductor current will come somewhere. Change in inductor current in the perturbation over one switching period. Okay, that I am telling you. So, how much variation is there? Variation means deviation. So, so initially it should be there. Okay, it was D S T. Okay, it is D T S. Now, due to perturbation, it is shifted from this point to here. It is coming that point. It is D S T. Okay. It is your IC means uh, one point signal current, okay, and the points is there in in one in in one both of the points slopes are there. It is I cap is zero, and it is coming. I it is steady steady is going to one year, and it is part of it. Okay, so magnifying view means previous slide we are making it magnified view, so it can see that part. Now you know that formula is okay. That exact things are there, okay. I L cap zero equal to minus in one degrees. So all the expression in the form of part of it. So small AC variations we are considered, and uh, finally we can calculate the value of the slope. So the expression of the slope. That is I cap T S, and finally we will get that minus into I M one means it is D by D dash. Okay, so you can see that all the inductor value, current expressions are the function of your steady state value and Your duty ratio. Okay. If anyhow the steady state value has changed, okay, and duty cycle is changed, so then what happens? Then you can observe, okay, that your converter dynamics, okay, it also will affected. Okay, so that's why when you are making your system uh, perfectly running, or if you try to model properly, so uh, that that's the basic motivation. So for model properly of your Okay. If you are not able to model properly, then there will be problem. Change of the inductor current perturbation over many switching periods. Okay. So if you did not follow for the one switching period, okay. So it will be there. So first, I L T S equal to I L zero minus D by D dash. Okay. So for the second switching period, if it is maintained, then in second cases that I L T S will be the initial condition for the second switching instance. So that's why I L cap two T S equal to I L cap T S. Okay, into minus D by D dash. Okay, so it is your second switching period. So now you can replace that value. Okay, you can replace that I L cap T S that value is there. Okay, so it is for the I L two T S. If that value is coming, I L cap zero multiplied minus D by D dash. Okay. So if it is n instant, then what happens? If it is I L cap n T S equal to I L cap n N so on whole into T S into minus D by D dash okay equal to I L zero whole into minus D by D dash whole to the power n okay so when that value is less than one okay when I L uh, I L cap N T S tends to zero okay tends to zero means that deviation is nearer to the very less the deviation of changing that In that kind of is very less, so it will be. If it is, if you can put it zero, okay, you can put it zero. Then what again? So that value should be the less than one. Okay, if you put it zero, so that value should be less than one. Okay, and if it is put it infinite, so d by d that value should be greater than one. So for the stability reason, you will get the d less than one. Okay. So now the second thing we can observe the unstable operation as we call point six. 
If b equal to 0.6, then you can see some cases. So alpha equal to you are putting the value of alpha equal to ratio of b and b dash. Okay, the, if b dash means 1 minus b, so it is coming minus 0.6 by 0.4. So it is coming minus 1.5. So it is more than 1.5. So it, it, there is some problem with instability. So why it is unstable? You can see due to the given perturbation, so it will come in here. Okay, then it is directly goes here, but it is not coming to the end position, means it is not crossing to that IL0. So there is some gap in it. Okay. Then again it will be go there due to the current program issue. Basically the two TS will be turned on. First you are giving the clock pulse. First TS then the clock pulse. Okay. Due to the clock pulse, no problem. Okay, it is starting from here, reach to the IC, then goes to uh, below of that from uh, normal steady state value and Come here. Okay. Then again the clock will go on. So it will be turned on. Okay. So it is deviated below means it will be take more time to reach over here. So when it will be reach there, so then touching that point, the switch will be off. Then it, the inductor current will be rise down. So current will be rise down. But what happened? In 2 TS again the clock pulse will be there. So automatically it cannot reach the steady state value, initial state steady state condition, okay, initial current, inductor current. So automatically clock will be on, okay, at the 2 TS, so again it will be climb up. So it will reach over there, again it will be rise down, climb down, okay. So at 3 TS, up to 3 TS, it will be uh, climb down, that inductor current, okay. Then what happened? Then again the clock will be appeared at 3 TS, then it will be done. So you can see the deviation is there. Okay, so the deviation is there. Okay, automatically all the time it is not maintaining the same steady state, same IL zero. Okay, same steady state, uh, same initial condition. Okay, due to that's why you can see like that at that value there is some deviation. Okay, at that value there is some instability. Okay, that study we can do in the chaos study means nonlinear dynamics. Study. So why it is coming, why that is unstable or instability is there. Okay, that thorough discussion is there, one subject is there, okay, that is called uh, chaos and the perturbation. Okay, that is where we can study about the very sophisticated uh, converter dynamics. Okay, so that is another ideal idea. Okay, so here in stable operation, D equal to 1 by 3 means 0.3. Okay, so if it's 0.3, you know, 1 by 3 means Switch. Okay, so you can replace what will be the value of alpha, alpha equal to minus b by d dash. So first one is uh, minus 1 by 3 by 1 minus 1 by 3. Okay, so that is 2 by 3, so it is coming to minus 0. 0.5. So in 0. 0.5 what happened? So you can see it is not crossing that area. First you can see some of the crossing area. Okay, something is there. So why it is stable? Okay, so you can see first it will be maybe uh, due to automation it will be deviated, so goes to the peak current mode, so touch over here, so come back here, okay. So normal steady state condition, steady state waveform means that lesser uh, that points, okay, that was, okay, that was normal. Now you can see that due to the perturbation, it will be coming over here, then come back to that point, so steady state, initial value is changing, then again it will be there. Okay, it will again climb back over there, then come back here, then turn on there. So finally you can see it will be going say it will be superimposed. Okay, it will be superimposed for the normal condition waveform. Okay. That's why you can say it is stable. But in that case, it is not superimposed. So first in single line, single line waveform you can see. So that was your normal convention. But you if you give that perturbation, so it is not coming back to here. So it is differ from your actual value. That's why you can say like that, it is an unstable. Okay, it is an unstable condition. Okay, so that's why it is called, it is unstable. Okay, it's unstable. And next one, you can see basically it is differ, no? Basically it is differ. But in next case, you can see it is stable. Okay, it is stable. Basically, finally it is super important that point. Okay, so it is called the stable. Here you can see both are the superimposed. Okay. So stabilization uh, via the addition of the artificial ramp. So additional ramp you have to add over here. That I am telling. Now so you are getting that inductor current pattern. Okay. So you can add another ramp. Okay. 
So if you add another RAM pins, it will really look like that. Okay, RAM is there. Okay, with your current for uh, current track here. Clock. Okay, so so from the clock signal, you can also find out the RAM. Basically, it's a signal generator. Clock means it's a signal generator circuit. Okay, that will provide you one artificial RAM that is connecting, uh, adding with your inductor current, current waveform. And uh, after that, it will be compared with your uh, control current, okay, control uh, control input and uh, the RAM plus inductor current. So then you are getting that one. So now transistor switch of instant will be like that. IA DTS plus IL DTS equal to IC. Now it is strange, you know, IC is strange. Okay, or it is equal to IC plus IC. You can see that uh, variations. I see initially it was dotted line. Okay, now it will be changed. I see is changed to on RAM. That dotted line plus RAM. No? So previous slide you can see it is a constant value plus RAM is added. Okay, so now it will be look like that. What? It will look like that. That value. I see minus I. That RAM value it will look like that. Okay, so it is having some slope. Okay. Now your inductor current that is followed from. So I am zero. It will climb down over here. Then climb down. And at that synchronized condition will be there. At PS again, that ramp will be high. So again, it will climb down, climb down. So by this way, so you can steady state also on the artificial ramp. So you can stable the system. Okay. So now we are giving some perturbations problem. Okay. So what will be the uh, changes of that perturbation? So ramp is there means what? We are giving the perturbation that I will, I will. Variation is there, na? That variation is there. So you can see that variation is less at that steady state condition for the next instant. So here I L zero, the initial condition for zero instant. So here you are getting I L T S. Okay. So it is normal condition. Okay. I L T S at this point, but the difference is less. Okay. Here the difference is more. Here the difference is less. So if you increase that value, it is steady state from and increase the value. So gradually it will be mitigating. Okay, gradually it will be mitigating and it will be maintain the stability. So that zone of stable operations in current mode control is less. So how to enhance that zone? So you are adding some ramp signal. Okay, you are adding some, you are adding some ramp signal with your control uh, control waveform. So you are making the system. So you are making that system uh, more stable. Okay, that operation is more stable. Stability analysis: the change in perturbation over the complete switching period. Okay. So the mathematical calculations are there, like uh, like your previous uh, previous operations, previous calculations. So you can follow that one. The first sub interval you can calculate the value I will do equal to minus delta T. Yes, plus M1 plus M2. Previously it was only M1, but now additional ramp is added, so that's why M. So then I L T S the calculation will be M minus M2. Additional ramp uh, slope is adding to her uh, normal control signal. That's why it will be changing like that. Net change over one switching period it is I L T S equal to I L calculate minus M2 minus M whole divided by M1 plus M. Okay. Finally we get the data. In the form of alpha with the nth cycle. Okay, so nth instant, nth switching time. So alpha equal to previously it was m2 by m1. Now it is change. Alpha equals to minus m2 by minus m2 minus m a whole divided by m1 plus m. So the value has changed. That's alpha value. Okay. Now characteristics uh, values of alpha. Okay, alpha equal to now it is minus. Uh, one minus m by m two whole divided by d dash by d plus m by m two. For stability, required mod alpha less than one. Bach and Bach boost converter that m two equal to minus d by m. Okay. For v equal to well regulated, well regulated means output voltage. You are giving some of the disturbance to the output voltage, but it will uh, maintain the steady state. Okay. So that's why it is called well regulated. Okay. So without giving any without giving any disturbance, it is regulated value. That value is making ticks. Okay, making constant. Okay, so that's why it is called well regulated. Then M2 is also well regulated. So definitely M2 equal to minus V by L. If V is well regulated, so M2 is well regulated. 
a common choice of any equal to 0.5 of any. Okay, that is common choice. This leads to alpha is equal to minus one and b equal to one. So when m equal to minus m equal to 0.5 m2, you put that value 0.5 m2. Okay, so it is coming one minus 0.5 means 0.5. Okay. M by M2 it is 0.5. The dash by B equal to 0.5. So alpha equal to what? Minus one. If we take the alpha equal to minus one, so minus minus cancel each other. So it is coming D dash by D plus 0.5 equal to minus 0.5. So D dash by D equal to only one. So D dash equal to D that is directly coming over there. So the alpha less mod alpha less than one for zero equal to that range is there zero. There is equal to D. There is equal to one. The minimum alpha that leads the stability that leads to stability for all the values of okay. Another common choice of m a equal to m two. This lead to uh, leads to alpha equal to zero for zero less equals to d less equals to one. Okay, so dead bit control of the finite second time. So dead bit control. Okay, means you know that one bang bang control means history system to means single bit means single point. So The concept of this is all of you are about the sliding mode control. You know? Just you are, I, I know that you don't know more about the sliding mode control. But the concept of the sliding mode control is coming from the bang bang control. You know, this is the same thing. Okay. So you have defined the sliding surface, okay, or the sliding line. So your uh, trajectory, okay, the system trajectory is maintaining, okay. It's, Maintaining that region, okay. So that is basic concept of the sliding mode. Now we are taking one basic example of the first order model, okay, where the switching converters is there, okay. And we are using current program of control, okay, current program control, CP, CPMC control, okay. So here the converter voltage and current you are sensing, and the converter voltage is there, that is you are sensing. And the reference is comparing the controller or the compensator is there. You are getting the Uh, control current, okay, and that current is the input of the current program controller. And what are the another input that is converter voltage and current? Sometimes PFC concept is there. That's why it is written converter voltages and currents. So if there are different um, mode stored energy storing elements, so it means more number of inductor like your inductor converter, okay, that I uh, that I told in my last class. Okay, so more inductor current will be required in that case. That's why it is written converter voltages and current. Okay, more voltages means more current. Okay, so that is why we come to that point and we are calculating the duty. Okay, after calculating the duty directly, you are uh, after calculating the duty directly you can uh, get the duty ratios or duty cycle for the switching devices. This is okay. So first uh, approximation, so same process we have maintained for that approximation over the switching period or over the switching time span. Okay, means uh, what are the uh, perturbations are there? So neglect the switching because of artificial lamp. So initially you can neglect okay that artificial lamp. Okay, and you can calculate after that you just incorporate that artificial lamp. Okay, there's the physical insight and the simple first order model. Activate from the converter operates. Well into the CCM so that the switching ripple is small. Okay. That is another issue. When uh, the magnitude of the artificial ramp is not too large, okay, ramp is not too large, so slope of the ramp is maintained. Okay, the resulting small signal relations. Okay, so here you can see the resulting small signal relations. Okay, that IL is more or less same same to your IC is. Okay, in that plus or minus complex frequency domain, they are more or less same. Okay, you have considered, and the simple model via the algebraic approach. So all the calculation last time discussed that of the basic and the algebraic approach. Okay, the CCM Bagus converter, it is your continuous solution for the Bagus converter. The model, okay, structure solution. Okay, here you know that current is there. The current is coming, you know, the current is coming. So ramp up, then ramp down, and the PS again it will be on. So the slopes are given. Okay, that is the slope for the switch on position. The slope for the switch on position. Okay. You know the the CCM bus which duty cycle control that equations that I have already been discussed. 
okay inverter voltage expression ka specify kare and what input current expressions okay then now we will do the laplace transformation okay so we will get the uh, uh, frequency domain value okay so all the cases the laplace are included and you can calculate the simple approximation so we are placing that ils equal to ics okay so you can simplify value and finally you get the duty ratio okay that v s and yeah, f s the duty ratio with the basic expressions of this uh, l c l c cap s minus d v cap s minus d l v cap s so the variable v g minus d so that expression you are getting from the duty ratio okay we will say the variation after putting all those values and the approximated the expressions okay so different steps are there so you can calculate the input current igs means you are getting the expression of the input current okay so from here you are getting the uh, capacitor voltage that expression is coming in the laplace transformation it is for the inductor current okay now it is for the inductor voltage expression and then you are using that capacitor uh, capacitor current okay so that laplace transformation and you are getting that, that it is a input current expression so finally that This is simplify the steady state relations. Okay, all now approximated value. Okay, all the approximation means you are putting that I L cap S equals to I C cap S. Okay, after putting all those values, we are getting that set of equations for capacitor current and that input current. Okay, and you know after getting the equation, you can use the KVL for draw the circuit. So construction of the given circuit for the input both ways. Input current expression. So okay, after getting the input current expression, what will be done? You know that is your current source. Okay, that is your voltage source, and it is also in the voltage source. Okay, so dependent and the potential not dependent. Okay, independent source. Okay, so you can get that one. And finally, you can construct the output port. So to put like concept output port means input current. Previously, it was expression of the input current. Now this expression is the Capacitor current. Okay, so IC. No, yeah, sorry, capacitor current. Okay, IC is not capacitor current here. IC is your uh, control current. Okay, so you can say like that. IC is okay, but here it is written by SCV cap. Okay, so that that uh, capacitor current you are getting SC. Okay, so you have that expression. You can replace that. Uh, you can uh, represent that equations in the form of the in the form of Sources, okay, dependent and independent sources. Now we can combine both of them. Okay, so it is the canonical model of the simple approximation. So we can combine both of them. Okay, so the the diagram, the two diagram. Okay, so combining, you are getting that answer. Okay, so for the table, the basic converter is there. Back converter, this converter, back this converter. What will be that expression that I have given? Okay, so current for the most small signal impedance circuit parameters. So circuit parameters means V one, V one, the R one. So all those parameters are there. Okay, so from the previous expression set, that is V one. It is your generalized constant, not generalized structure. So that is your R one, V one, V one, V two, V two, and R two. Okay, so near for the it is for the back loop parameter. So output side that is IC cap means. I see that means F two S. Okay, that is your F two S. Okay, so you can eliminate the S. So how to do the F two? F two will be there for back loop converter. We can minus D cap whole into one minus S D L whole into D L. So all the cases you can find out for back loop converter and back converter. Okay, that is your homework. So you all of this cross check it for the time of programming for the back converter and loop converter and Write in your classwork copy, and uh, when you are submitting, so next week I will collect, I will collect all the class notes and the assignments next by the next weekend. Okay, uh, so I will collect all the class notes and uh, assignments. At that time, you have to submit the, all the derivations, calculations, mathematical expressions for uh, each and everything that I have been discussing now. Okay, so I hope you are able to understand. If you have any confusion, you can ask me. So I can uh, I can complete my today's session. Okay, so if you have any doubt, you can ask me, or you can write in the chat box. So I can. Uh, uh, <coughs>
so I can discuss the point. Okay, so I hope uh, there is no questions from your side. Okay, so if you have any confusion, you can write over here. Okay, I can uh, discuss it to read the questions from the chat box. Okay, so I can complete my today's session. Okay, thank you. Hello, sir. Hello.